Hey guys, this is Jeff with Just Live It, and today we're gonna cover three basic trusses. If you're looking to build a house or you're gonna build a pole barn, these types of trusses typically are just gonna be from wall to wall. They're gonna be free span, and we'll talk about how to calculate the pitch, kind of some pros and cons, and what these three general trusses have to offer. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the pitch of the roof. We've got lots of options. If you want a flatter roof, you're gonna be talking about what's called maybe a 412. You can't go much lower than a 412, but you'll hear people use these numbers frequently, five, six, seven, 12. When you get into really steep roof lines, you're talking about the nine and the 10, 12 pitch. Let me explain how that works. Imagine your truss spanning from the outside walls of your house is 38 feet. If you take that 38 foot truss and you go from the outside to the center, that's 38 divided by two, and you're gonna get 19 feet from the outside to the inside. Now the 412 pitch means that for every foot, every foot you move from the outside to the center, you're gaining four inches of elevation. You can do the same math for any pitch, six, seven, doesn't matter. So theoretically, from here to here, it's 19 feet. You multiply that 19 times the four, and that's gonna give you 76 inches. So you've gained a height from here to here of 76 inches. Easy enough, we divide the 76 by 12 for 12 inches in a foot, and we come out with 6.3. So here's how it is. If your wall, if the wall of your house is 10 feet tall, that means that from the ground to here is 10 foot, you've gained another six foot four inches. Here's why you need to know that is because depending on where you live, your house or your barn may have a height requirement based on your local municipalities. So your planning and zoning department will tell you that you have a maximum height. They're basing that maximum height off of the peak of the roof. So this is why we have to do these calculations sometimes and it's just that simple. So the basic trusses that you're gonna choose from are simply gonna be a flat cord truss, a scissor truss, or an attic truss. Now, the flat cord is almost predominantly what every pole barn is going to have. These can be spaced at different increments that has to do with the engineering. And there are pros and cons of having larger spacing. Some builders will put them every eight feet or even nine feet. Sometimes we build our buildings every four foot, and then there are reasons why you would bring them every two foot. If you're doing an asphalt shingle roof and you're gonna need to put sheets of OSB to bear the weight of that, you do need to bring those trusses every two feet. But when you're standing inside the building, you're gonna look up and this is gonna be the ceiling height of your building. If you're trying to gain a little extra head height right down the middle of the building, you can do what's called a scissor truss. The scissor truss would be a little different in the sense that, say this outside pitch is running a 412 pitch. The inside of the cord, the ceiling inside your building will run sometimes maybe a one and a half pitch, even a two pitch. So you're just gaining a few inches as you're going up. But for some reason, say you had a building inside that was only 10 foot tall, so the outside wall is 10 foot, but you wanna put a car lift inside, you could gain a few feet as you go right there to the center of the building. These do cost more money because the engineering is different and the lumber is gonna be a little bit different on a scissor truss. And then if you're building a house or even a pole barn and you're thinking through, I wanna gain that additional storage space, the attic truss will definitely be more money, but what you gain is this inside 
living space or usable space, we should call it. If your building is not wide, you need to think it through. You're probably not going to be gaining a lot of living space in there because you're going to burn up these corner edges. So in order for the attic truss to work well, you're going to need to have a taller pitch on the roof line. And you're also need to probably going to have to have at least say 32 foot or wider on a building in order to really make this a viable option. But you think those things through because there's pros and cons. This is the cheapest way to go. And then this is the most, you know, uh, the most beneficial way so that you can get some additional space up there. Hey, thanks again for watching our videos. If you are in the journey of building a home or you're doing the research on building a pole barn, we would love to hear your thoughts and your comments. If you've got some ideas of videos that would be helpful from our end to give back to you, like and subscribe to our channel and let us know what we can do to help you out in the process. Thanks.